World War II, of course, ended 38 years ago, and for most of us, it is long forgotten. But sadly and amazingly, for a group of special men who fought and died in that war, it never seems to end. Here's Ed O'Dell. We were as good as Whitey. We proved it. They would have been just another group of Americans fighting for mom and apple pie during World War II, but they weren't allowed to. Instead, they were discriminated against and told they were ignorant and cowardly. Then after the war, they were ignored. To the U.S. War Department, who didn't want them around, they were Eleanor Roosevelt's niggers. To the Nazi, whom they kicked around France and Germany, they were the feared Schwarzepanzers. If history ever records them correctly, you will remember them as the 761st Tank Battalion. Never heard of them, right? Well, you're not alone in that respect. That's one of the reasons this book, Hit Hard, was written, so that someone might remember them. It documents the struggles of a small group of brave black men who had to first fight the horrors of racism just to be able to go off and die for this country in World War II. Anywhere from 26 and a quarter to 30. David Williams, as right. author of both Shall Hit I Hard and another you? book entitled Eleanor Roosevelt's Niggers, also on the first black tank corps to see combat in WW2. Now a Carl Gable stockbroker in 1942, Williams was a young second lieutenant assigned to the battalion, which was attached to then First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt because it was at her insistence that the group be formed. During those times, no one of authority believed black men capable of operating a tank. All they cared about was their pride in trying to survive and trying to do something for their country. I don't want to sound corny, but it's the truth, do something for their country. And we whites used to get in the officer's club and some of them would sing, I'm dreaming of a white battalion to the tune of I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Robert Cooper was in headquarters company during the war, delivering food and ammunition to the front. We were very good soldiers from the standpoint of having trained well before we actually went into combat. Twyman Bentley, then a gunner in Company C, now living in Coconut Grove, remembers. We were fighting, uh, we were spearheading for the, the uh, Eighth Armored Division, which were General Patton's crack outfit. And they had a division of tanks and we only had a battalion of tanks. And we did the job. But then after the war, a funny thing happened to the 761st on the way home. When the awards were being passed out, they were forgotten. David Williams showed us a manual of awards the French government handed out. These were towns, Chateau Solin, Vixer Seal, that A Company, that all the companies had fought in, especially Morville and Vic, where we lost 13 tanks. Not even a mention. Then I turn over and I see where a veterinary unit got the same award for evacuating cattle. After, this is after the war, battle's over. Not that they didn't, they did their duty, but how many casuals, casualties did they take? And then 26th awarded the Belgian Croix de Guerre to their division band. But the French weren't the only ones to treat them as invisible men. <laughs> It took 33 years for the United States government to recognize the exploits of the 761st Tank Battalion. The citation read, During 183 days of continuous combat, the 761st inflicted thousands of enemy casualties, aided in liberating more than 30 major towns, four airfields, three ammunition dumps, while enduring an overall casualty rate approaching 50%. Out of a band of about 600 who went to Europe, only about 300 returned. And each year since about 1950, they have met together in a convention to remember and plan for the future. The annual convention was where Evelyn Cooper learned about some of the things her husband went through and why some of the memories are so bitter. His feet and his hands were frostbitten. Now he's having a problem with his feet and his hands. But the government doesn't know anything about this because it wasn't reported. As David Williams looks over souvenirs from the front that have become tattered with age, so goes their continuing battle for recognition. The unit is still pushing to get the French Croix de Guerre and the Congressional Medal of Honor from the United States for a fallen comrade. But the fight to get those nations to reopen files now, some 38 years later, is as large as the fight against Nazi Germany. I couldn't get out of my mind a burning tank and the guys were counting them as they got out. The guy with his hair on fire, 
or pulling them out the next day or worrying about who got a leg off and they're laying out there somewhere like Corporal Hilliard. God, he's long gone and probably forgotten. He hasn't been forgotten because for the men of the 761st Black Panther Battalion, whose motto was come out fighting, the fight to be remembered still goes on.